here's the boss guy to Mirrodin. You're welcome. So, you want to play Mirrodin like a boss? Well, my friend, you've come to the right place. However, first of all, you better make sure you know what you're getting yourself into when you pick Mirrodin. This hero can jump out of bushes and assassinate his enemies like a fat ninja, pushes people around more than your elementary school bully, and is so adept at wielding a hammer that he makes Thor jealous. Now, if you still think you can handle that, keep watching. Otherwise, just go play somebody else. Alright, starting off, let's go over Mirrodin's skills and tips for them. Your first Q ability, Storm Bolt, allows you to throw a hammer dealing damage and stuns the first target it hits. Use it to pin down enemies during fights, interrupt crucial channeling abilities, and lock down escaping opponents. Your second W ability is Thunderclap. Mirrodin hits the ground with his hammer, damaging and slowing enemies in an area around him. This ability provides decent area of effect damage and a potent slow. It's best for adding chaos and disrupting multiple enemies during teamfights and slowing down enemies during a chase. Your third E ability is Dwarf Toss. This ability allows you to jump a short distance, dealing damage in an area when you land. It's great for ganking lanes, surprising enemies by jumping out of a bush, jumping on high priority targets in a teamfight, chasing down enemies, and escaping from fights. Your last and ultimate ability is Haymaker. We'll just be using this one for the build. This ability has the potential to set up amazing plays and kills because it allows Mirrodin to push an enemy a great distance across the map and deal significant damage to the target as well. Other opponents in the way also take minor damage and get knocked back. With this ability, you can push an enemy completely out of position and deny their escape. You can push them into your base for an easy kill. You can push them out of objectives. You can even use it as a finisher. This skill might as well be called Playmaker because that's what you'll be doing. Your trait is Second Wind. This increases your health regeneration tremendously after you've been out of battle for a few seconds. It allows you to stay on the field after taking heavy damage because you'll regenerate so quickly after fights. Between this trait replenishing your health and healing wells restoring your mana, you'll rarely have to go back to the fountain to heal. Now onto talents and gameplay. Early game talents at level 1 get Infused Hammer. This talent refunds you a large chunk of mana if you hit a hero with Storm Bolt. It will help you keep your mana up so you can freely use your abilities without worrying too much about getting mana blocked, especially in the middle of a gank or a team fight. At level 4, go for Thunderburn. This talent boosts your Thunderclap ability, giving you a second smaller Thunderclap after a short delay in the same area that does some damage and slows the target again. The damage is minor, but the second slow can really make a difference in fights and chases. At level 7, go for Piercing Bolt. This upgrade to your Storm Bolt ability makes it so that you can hit two targets rather than one. Aside from stunning multiple targets, this helps you land stuns much easier during teamfights when a minion or a spawn unit might otherwise block your stun. It also synergizes extremely well with Infused Hammer, because it's jackpot if you hit two heroes with one Storm Bolt. You'll get double the mana refund. Hope you can swim because you'll be drowning in mana! Now onto early game gameplay. In the early game, your top priority right at the start should be roaming from lane to lane, ganking helping your teammates kill their opponents in lane and around the map. In early game, your skills are wasted if you're just sitting in the lane soaking experience, because your slows and stuns are arguably at their most potent in the early game. So start off in a dual lane so you can leave freely to gank around the map. Look for lanes where enemies are extending past the halfway point where you can come up behind them or jump out of a bush to slow and stun them. Now, I'm going to take a second to walk you through Mirrodin's early gameplay style and ganking strategy. Bouse style! And just like Mirrodin's unsuspecting enemies in lane, you're not going to see this coming. Let's go! Top lane. Gank! Mid lane. Gank! Bot lane. Gank! Heal up. Now I was hiding around some heroes pushing up to my tower and teammates had to move on back Enemies got a lot of pushing power Team sees me move around the back Team sees me ping into attack Team started to move forward and now I'm ready to kick some ass Jumped out of a dark bush slow too Looking to get some kills soon Then my team came up I used my stun and now they get doomed Ganking all the time The takedowns on repeat Got a kill then another kill soon it's victory In order to gank effectively with Mirrodin in the early game, 
Communicate with your ally in lane that you are coming to gank. Sneak behind enemies in lane and jump on them with Dwarf Toss. Stun and slow them while your allies come in to help you finish off your target. But don't bother trying to go gank a lane if there isn't an ally in it, because you'll have enough damage early game to take out anyone one on one unless they are low on HP anyways. Your power comes from your ability to slow and lock down enemies so that your allies can come in and finish them off. Even if you take a lot of damage during a gank, it's okay, just walk it off like a boss! But literally, you can walk it off because your trait will heal you up as you travel to another lane. Now, on to mid game talents. At level 10, go for Haymaker. This ability gives you such incredible damage and utility, and makes you magnitudes times more dangerous in any engagement. It's built to heavily disrupt enemy positioning. If you push an opponent to a bad spot or to a group of teammates, they're dead meat. The damage on it is great and can be used as a finisher if necessary. However, always be mindful of where you aim the push, even if you intend to use it as a finisher, because you don't want to accidentally push an enemy to safety. At level 13, grab Burning Rage. This constant area of effect burn will help tremendously with clearing minion waves and mercenary camps, as well as increase your overall damage per second in teamfights and engagements. Now, on to mid game gameplay. In the mid game, roaming is still your top priority and plays mostly the same, except now you'll have Haymaker, which makes you even more dangerous than before. Now you can jump out behind enemies and push them backwards towards your allies, completely denying any chance of escape. During team fights in the mid game, similar to ganks, you usually want to come out from behind the enemy team, maintaining the element of surprise so you can jump in on the fight right on top of an assassin or a specialist in the back. Use your stun and slow to help you set up your haymaker and push your target out of the protection of their team where your team can easily pick them off. In team fights, you're going to be drawing a lot of enemy attention, which is good because it allows your team's assassins more freedom to focus on bringing down opponents. Your abilities will be back up in no time, so stick on to high priority targets to slow them and stun them again. Use your jump to escape the fight or chase down fleeing enemies. You are actually really good at chasing down enemies because of your mobility coupled with your slows and stuns. Outside of fights, you can do mercenary camps or wipe enemy minion waves easily with your area of effect abilities, thunderclap and burning rage. Although you should be constantly looking for opportunities to gank and team fights to help in. Now onto late game talents. At level 16, get dwarf launch. This talent greatly increases the distance you can jump, boosting your ability to engage opponents from afar and escape from sticky situations. It'll also make it extremely easy to set up spectacular haymaker plays by jumping to the other side of an enemy and pushing them backwards because they don't expect you to be jumping that far. That's cause Mirrodin never skips leg day! At level 20, get Resurgence or Grand Slam. Grand Slam is amazing because it essentially doubles your ultimate, allowing you to store two charges and use it twice in a fight. The 25% damage increase is also significant because the base damage is already so high, and this will allow you to assassinate squishier heroes since they don't expect you to do so much damage. Resurgence of the Storm is always a great pickup at level 20 if you're dying a lot or playing from behind. Instant respawn every once in a while is incredible to have. Now onto late game gameplay. Late game gameplay for Muradin is all about disruption. Your goal is to create hell for your enemies during fights. You also excel at chasing down fleeing enemies and initiating ganks on unsuspecting enemies while roaming with your team. Dwarf Toss and Haymaker are your best friends late game. Use them to jump out of bushes, over walls, onto your unsuspecting target and push them way out of position or to where your teammates can pick them off and sometimes you'll just be able to straight up kill them. Teamfights play similar to mid game, but with your increased dwarf toss range it'll be much easier to jump onto assassins or specialists and destroy them with haymaker. Stick onto high priority targets one at a time and bring them down with your slow and stun. Move around the fight with your dwarf toss to intercept any fling enemies or engage onto another target. Mercenary camps and enemy minion waves should both melt under your thunderclap and burning rage damage so you can lead mercenary camp captures or minion wave pushes when there are no fights or ganks. Alright now that's it for this boss guide to Muradin. Get out there, dazzle your team and wreck your enemies because that's what boss Muradin is all about.
And on a real note, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and find it both helpful and entertaining. If you like this and want to see more, show some love by liking, commenting, maybe sharing your own success or failure stories with the guide, and of course, subscribing. <laughs>